Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video I want to show you how to create a multi-threaded port scanner with Python. So as a demonstration, what we're going to build, if we just run our port scanner Python file, and if we look at the output, what we've done is we're scanning an IP address, and we're also dividing up the port numbers to different worker threads. So we'll have a worker thread working on ports 8800 to 8900, uh, one working on 500 to 600, and things like that. So this will dramatically speed up, or drastically speed up the application. And then when a port is open, we'll see it'll say port, the number is open, is open, is open. And then it'll give us a time of how long it took to scan everything. And disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only, so don't go around just scanning random IP addresses off the internet. But so before we get coding too, I just wanna do a quick brief overview of how port scanners work, specifically how this one works. So what port scanners do is they search for processes that are listening out for connections. The scanning is often done with the TCP protocol, but it can also be done with UDP as well. In this example, we're gonna be using TCP, and when using TCP, the scanner will attempt to perform a three-way handshake to establish a connection. If this handshake fails, then the port is considered closed, and if this handshake succeeds, then the port is open. So every time we're scanning a port here, basically our server, or our application, sorry, is trying to establish a connection with a port on this IP address by using TCP. And in this code, we can also see how the amount of worker threads that we have can speed up the process. So here it took 30 seconds to run. We can switch this number, which we'll learn all about within here, and see how it impacts the performance. So if I change this to 20, for example, and run the application, previously it took 30.55 seconds, but if we only have 20 worker threads, so now we can see the ports that have been divided up, there's only 20 ranges, and the application will not run as quickly as it did with 100 workers. But so to start this application, I'm just gonna open up an empty directory. And in here, I'm just gonna create a file called portscanner.py. And the first thing we're gonna do, so I'm gonna copy and paste code throughout this and then go over what it's doing. And the first thing we wanna do is just import all our libraries. And so the libraries we're gonna be using are concurrent.futures, socket, and time. And so the concurrent.futures library is basically for executing functions asynchronously. So we're gonna use this to scan multiple ports at different times, or sorry, at the same time. And then what we can import from it is the thread pool executor. And so there are different ways we can execute async functions. We can use processes or we can use threads. And the thread pool executor will run these functions asynchronously with threads. Then we have our socket library, which is what we're gonna to use to try and establish a connection with the IP address on and the provided port. And then we're gonna use the time library just to calculate the time difference or how long the application took to run. And now after this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable called max workers. And this will be the max amount of threads that will execute our functions asynchronously. So these, each one of these threads will be 100 of them, or at least max 100, and we're gonna assign each one of these threads to a different range of ports to scan. And so of course you can change this variable and see the time difference in how long it takes for the application to run. But now let's create a function to divide up the provided port range into a number of ranges. So when we have our port range, we want to divide it up into ranges that we can assign to our threads. I'm just gonna do this in a function called generate port chunks. So we're gonna get a port range, say range of zero to 10,000, and we're gonna divide these up into how many max workers we have. So it'll come in, for example, as say you wanna analyze ports zero to 10,000, what it's gonna do is it's gonna get the ranges by splitting on this character here, and then we're gonna get an array, create an array of arrays. So in other words, what this code here will do is it will generate a list, say the first one will be zero to 1,000, the next one will be you know 1,000 to 2,000, and so on, like this. So that's what the code here is gonna do. And the amount of lists we have, so the amount of nested lists in here will depend on how many workers we have, because essentially each one of these ranges is gonna be assigned to a worker. And then we just return this nested array. And so after creating these chunks, let's just create a scan function to check for the open ports. And this is the function that will be ran asynchronously in our thread pool. And I'm just gonna call this one, I'm just gonna call it scan, and it's gonna take an IP address and a range of ports. So it's going to take one of the chunks from here. So we have our array of port chunks, and then we get an individual chunk, which will be a range like 0 to 1,000 or whatever it is. And what we're going to do is we're just going to print scanning IP address from the first port to the last port, 
And then for each port in this range, we are gonna try to create a TCP IPv4 connection to it. So here we're creating a socket and what it takes is two arguments. The first one is specifies the address family, which is gonna be IPv4, which is what AF INET is. And then we have the, the socket kind, which is gonna be stream, which essentially means TCP. If we wanted to do UDP, for example, it's something, I believe it's SOC DGRAM for datagram, but we're using TCP. And then we're gonna set a timeout of two seconds. So if we're scanning for, a, if we're trying to establish a connection and nothing happens in two seconds, we'll consider it closed. And then we will just try and connect to that IP address port. If this is successful, then we go to the next line and print that the port is open. But if not, it'll throw, this connection here will throw an exception, which we will just catch here and do nothing with. But now we just need to create our main function to run the application. So to use these two methods, and I'm just gonna call it main of course. And then we're just gonna have our IP address, which this right here is a server I own. And then we have a port range of specified ports range, which for me is zero to 10,000. We're gonna divide up this range into chunks. So this is where we get that nested list. Then we're gonna do a start timer, and then we're gonna submit these tasks to be executed by the thread pool. And so one of the ways we can do that is with this map function, which will essentially run this command with these arguments. So we provide our, so we map through our IP address for however many chunks there are, and then we provide the port chunks. So essentially this will provide the IP address and then the port chunk to this scan function, which we created up here, and it takes the IP address and then the port chunk. And then after it's done with that, we run our, we get our end time. And then we're just gonna log out the end time minus the start time and run the application. And real quick, more information on this right here. So we're setting, this is where we set the max workers for the pool. And we also use this with syntax, so with as executor. And essentially this allows us to close the pool when we're done. So it's a way to handle automatic resource management, essentially, or have Python handle our resource management. So using this with right here, we'll just ensure that our thread pool is closed down when it's finished. But that's all it takes to run this, so or create this app. So all we need to do now, let's just do Python 3, and then run our port scanner. And we can see I had 100 workers, so a max of 100 workers. So we've divided up the range of, what is it, the range of 0 to 10,000. So divide that by 100, which would be what, 100? So then we have 100, we'll have 100 ranges, all of which are being worked on by our threads we can see we found three ports that are open and I think those are the only ones that are open. So now we just need to wait for it to calculate how long it took. So it was 40 seconds. And what you can do is you can just change this max workers number to see how much it impacts the running of the program. So for example, if I changed it to 20, it'll probably take longer than 40 seconds. So our ranges are, we have less ranges and less worker threads or a smaller maximum of worker threads. So it'll probably be slower. But while this is running, I'll also just go over a little more on threads. So multi-threading and multi-processing are two ways to execute a function asynchronously in Python, and they both speed up the execution of code, and that's what, why we're using them in this app and why you can see toggling this number right here makes an impact. And just to note um, some theory on threading is multi-threading executes multiple threads simultaneously within the same process. So threads belong to a process. And then one other thing I just wanna mention while this is still running is firewalls or other security measures could make a port appear closed. So right now we have these ones open, but say on my server I have a firewall that's blocking certain ports, this would impact which ports are displayed as open. So to get a real thorough analysis of which ports are open, you should use some kind of tool like Netcat or Nmap, something like that. But here we go, now we can see it took 63 seconds, so it's longer because we didn't we had a smaller max amount of workers. That's all I wanted to show you in this video. If you like it, check out my courses in the description. Also my Chrome extension, Wet Scepter. You'll probably find it pretty cool. But besides that, take care and have a good one.